Alright, hello everybody and welcome to another video. So today's video is gonna be a bit <laughs> sorry, it's gonna be a bit longer. It's gonna be basically gonna be um a sort of a Game Boy modding primer video. So basically I've been learning about how to do various game boy modifications the past couple of years and uh, it's it's starting to be a resurgent factor. Yeah. It's starting to be the Game Boy scene is starting to come out in, in a lot of resurgence in the past couple of years. So I thought I'd uh just talk a bit about how to like to get started and well not we get started but like what exactly you can do what you can mod for a Game Boy. Well, let's get started. Okay, so what am I gonna cover? I'm gonna cover how to apply modifications to various Game Boys. So the DMG, which is the original Game Boy, the Game Boy Pocket, the Game Boy Color, and the Game Boy Advance. So I'm gonna say what you can mod, what parts you will need, uh, what to look out for. Oh, okay, and that's it. <laughs> I forgot what I wrote. Alright, so introduction. So what is modding exactly? So modding refers to any modification that a user can do to an existing electronic product that was not intended by original manufacturer. So um, in our case, uh, well, actually, okay, well, I'll get into it. So two types of modding. Software modification, so you can uh, change the underlying software of a, of a device that, that the original developer didn't allow for so um so you so 3ds's and custom firmware or psp custom firmwares or um ps2 jailbroken ps3 stuff like that that's software modification and there's hardware modifications where you where you actually add physical components to an existing electronic devices print circuit board or motherboard logic board depending what you want to call it Alright, so how would this relate to the Game Boy? Well, since the Game Boys are all electronic devices, that means they're capable of being modded. So for Game Boys, only that you can only there's no software modifications for a Game Boy, except for uh, like um, D Nintendo DSs or DS Lights or 3DSs, because those have uh, some kind of an operating system on it, whereas Game Boys do not. So uh, over the past couple of years, a lot of mods, plethora of mods have come out for, for Game Boys from various parties. So let's talk about common modifications. Okay, so what would you might want to do to a Game Boy? So the big one, probably what most people are going to do, excuse me, is the screen. So since the original Game Boys, um, okay, yeah, well, excluding the Game Boy Light and the Game Boy Advance SP, do not, and of course the Game Boy Micro, do not have any sort of uh, front light or back light. A popular mod is to have back at one of these devices. And sound modification, not as popular, but still something you can do. Since most Game Boys don't have the best sound, there are popular options to add an amplifier to increase the sound output. So, okay, so we'll, let's go through the overview for each type of Game Boy. So, DMG, backlight sound, pocket, backlight sound, color, front light. The, for the color, you got the front, the back, and the sound. GB, same thing, front light, back light, and the sound. SP, well, you got different screen options, and, my, and Game Boy Micro, not, and I'm not aware of any. And I guess the Game Boy Light, you can do a sound mod technically to it. Okay, so talk about the original Game Boy, the DMG-01, the Dot Matrix game. So it was released in 1989. So that makes it about 30... Well, it was 31 years old, I think. Yeah, it came out, I think, in April in 89 in Japan. So, okay, so... So it's Nintendo's first dedicated handheld gaming system to have interchangeable cartridges. They had before this the Game & Watch. But the Game & Watch was only... It only played one game. Whatever was in that game is the only game it played. And unlike the the Game Boy, which has interchangeable cartridges, much like the NES did, and you know all systems do. So as a monochrome screen, people call it a pea soup green, whatever your preference is. It's got mono output and stereo headphone only through the when you when using a, pair, a headset. It's got of course a D pad, A B start and select, same layout as an NES, and it's got a link cable so you can connect two Game Boys together for multiplayer games. Okay, so backlight overview. Backlight refers to the addition of the Game Boy screen from behind. To backlight, you have to remove the original polarizer first, which I'm not going to get into exactly what a polarizer is, the technology of it, but just needless to say, we need to remove it. So it's not an, e an easy mod to do, and I will explain to you why. Okay, so let's look at the picture of the board. So here is a board a picture of the board from Wikipedia, which I don't think I can zoom in on. But you'll see here, 
in this section here there is a this is part of the screen connection so these are soldered onto the main board and once you solder the these ones are also ones in the back. So these are hard to desolder because, well, the pins here are very delicate. And I have broken a few of my, uh, which I will show you guys. So the ribbon cable is fragile. So as I said, I've broken some ribbon um, pole like this. Sometimes it even isn't apparent that it's broken, but it is. And uh, so there's no way to extract the LCD. It's soldered on. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> for sure, for guys said basically people try to remove the L the polarizer without actually just while it's soldered to the board, which is hard because if you strain that ribbon cable, it's it's toast. The screen is totally dead. You won't be able to use it at all. Um, so here's a video, which I'm not going to show you on this. I'm going to see if I can um, get it. On my iPad. So while you guys wait for this, I'm gonna get my iPad. All right, so let's get back to the actual slideshow. All right. Oh, sorry. Just put my iPad down. Give me a sec. Okay. So yeah. Okay. This is another video similar to that. So, so the the this is a a good way. Of, oh, sorry. That was how most people attempt to do it, which is not bad. And you can get really good at not breaking that ribbon cable. But your chances of success are what? I would say maybe like 60 to 70%, right? Because like even if you get good at it, there's still a chance that you're going to strain that ribbon cable and break it. And once you break it, that's it. So a better way is to actually desire the board from this. Um, but as I said, it's more difficult at first because you're gonna break some screens at first. But once you get the technique down, it's it, you're, you're always a hundred percent success rate. Uh, I can show you guys another video. Um, should I show? Yeah, okay. I'm gonna show it quickly, just because. Okay, just let me wait. I'm gonna get it.
All right, so I'm switching to the iPad. Okay, so we are back. All right, let's continue the slideshow. All right, so yeah, as I said, I've broken three screens like this. I think four, and I actually have broken another one since then. All right, so I'll show you some pictures. So I just have to. Let me just get my iPad ready. All right, just a sec. Okay. All right, so I'm going to spread to my iPad now. Okay, so let's go back into it. All right. Okay, so there's another, there's a second backlight option for the DMG. It's made by a guy uh, named Ben Venn, I think. He has his handle, and he makes. Um, he's uh, he's he's a modder who, who specializes in making sort of new LCDs for the Game Boy. Um, it comes with its own LCD board because the Game Boy has two boards: there's the LCD board and like the motherboard. I know it's weird, but they split into two sections. So, uh, do I show you as a picture? I guess I will. Um, yeah, okay, so just, um, let's see. Um, yeah, okay. 
So I will, sh I will get on my iPad again. I just keep it on me. Okay. Okay, back to this. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back. So yeah, so basically he, re I believe he reverse engineered the code that's on the screen, and managed to make his own. Um. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna show some pictures of the the processes on the board, but I don't really think I need to. But it will require a shell modification. Shell modification is where you modify the original housing of a Game Boy to fit certain modifications. Oh, okay. I just uh, explained that. Okay. Phew. I thought it froze. Alright, so another option is an IPS mod. So IPS is in-plane switching. It's a new type of LCD technology. It's better than what the DMG originally had. Well, the dot matrix. Okay. So similar to the Benven mod, this kit also comes with its own LCD board. It will also require shell modifications. So now let's talk about which backlight you should buy. Okay, so if you want to use as many Nintendo parts as possible, desoldering and some of the backlight is the best way to go. Though all of the limitations of the DMG, especially the, the blurring, when, will still be there. If you mind shell modification, the Benven kit could be something you can look at though, but for 45 USD makes it not affordable. Plus, it's uh, it's not always in stock. So, versus the back the backlist that they sell almost always in stock. And the IPS is probably the best looking option, but 68 USD is by far the most expensive option. And you also need to require shell modification. And I've heard people report that uh, the buttons don't work properly, so there's that to consider. But then I've heard the newer version eliminates that, so you have to do your research. Yeah, so as I said, the uh, Benven APS mod of limited stock, whereas the regular backlight kit is always rarely available. Yeah, so they sell it pretty fast whenever new stock comes. All right, so buy version. Let's talk about buy version for a bit. So we may refer about buy version for your DMG. Maybe one what exactly this is. So it's the process in which the on pixels turn off and vice versa. For a DMG, this means that all lighter pixels are turned dark and all dark pixels turn light. You get better contrast, but it's an inverted look. I, yeah, I actually had a Game Boy once. I did it by vert on, but then I broke the screen, so I should take some pictures. But anyway, that's besides the point. So when we do a by version mod, we have to reverse the polarizer so that so that it's dark. It reflects dark on the LCD, but then the dark pixels will be light, and light pixels will be dark, and vice versa. So basically, you'll hear most people say it's highly recommended to do the Biber Mon combination with the backlight. Usually it comes in the form of a PCB that you have to solder to the DMG main board. board. Of course, the biggest challenge on your own counter is trying to lift the pin necessary to do this on the on the connector. And I accidentally lifted the wrong ones and had to re solder them and lift the proper ones. It's not it's not it's not beginner friendly, but it it'll take you some practice. Oh, well, example images. Um, okay, example images. Let's um, let's look at some. I'm gonna. Okay, oops. I guess uh, <laughs> I guess I opened the the link by accident. Okay, let's look at some example images. All right, so example images. Alright, so let's change back to the iPad so I can show you. 
what exactly I'm talking about. Okay, so now we got back to the rest. All right, so all right, so let's talk about Game Boy Pocket Pocket <laughs> Game Boy Pocket backlighting. Okay, so reached nineteen ninety six. The Game Boy Pocket is identical to the DMG. It plays the same games, though it's a lot smaller. Runs off of two AAA batteries instead of four AA batteries, and has a better screen, but but not backlight in any way. So there's also a backlit, backlit option for the pocket as well. So the same backlit, usually the same backlit used for the DMG can also be used for the pocket. And the screen is separate from the main board, so you can always, if you have multiple pockets, you can always like try different screens. So, but the ribbon cable is still fragile, and I actually broke two pocket screens because of this. So desoldering, once again desoldering, well not really desoldering the screen, this time we're desoldering the ribbon cable to connect it to the screen. Oh, uh, okay. I was going to show some pictures, but I don't really think it's necessary, so we're going to move on. Okay, so, um, um, sorry. Okay, so Benman also makes a TFT LC display for the Game Boy Pocket. Um, since it's been recently released, we'll have to wait for reviews to see what, what, what its features, what its pros and cons are. So no shell modification required. It's a true drop. It means you just drop it and connect it to the mother motherboard with the Game Boy Pocket, and it works. So funny playing it. This is another manufacturer also makes uh, their own version of it. It's similar to it. It uses a TFT panel. And also no shell modification required, though the resolution is slightly less than the stock Pocket, so it's a it's a bit smaller to keep aspect ratio and stuff like that. Uh, do I need to show a picture? Okay, I guess I will. All right, let's uh, uh, let's uh, let me just find you guys. TFT funny playing. Uh, pocket. Okay, so um, I'll switch back to the iPad. All right. Okay. All right. So. Oh dang. All right. Okay, I reset all this, and so I'm not going to explain it. 
Excuse me. Okay, so what pocket backlight is right for you? So I've been for an using the original Nintendo screen, the backlight is the way to go. But you have the same limitations that the original pocket screen has. So, but the, the soldering and restarting of the ribbon cable will be a challenge. And since the Ben Ribbon was released, we'll have to wait and see. And, and it cost about 50 USD. So stock was limited. At the time I'm recording this, the, he, he's out of stock. So, the final payment was 54 USD. So it's price competitive, but stock is limited. So yeah, for the funny thing is small original pocket. I'm 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 a, I'm not sure if the band one's gonna be smaller too. We'll have to see. Alright, so like the DMG, the big pocket could also be inverted. Since the pocket has a better screen than DMG, it's not really a necessity. Though you can still install it if you want. And P minor because the pocket is really small, that means. Uh, it makes the installation more difficult, and, it, and I believe it's more difficult than than lifting up two pa two uh, connector pins. Oh, show a picture. Well, I'm not gonna show them now. All right, so the Game Boy Light, released exclusive in Japan, 1998. Another Game Boy Pocket is up as a backlight, making the first Nintendo handheld, making it the first Nintendo handheld to actually have a backlight. Excuse me. So, for my rental, the backlight isn't the best. And it's not recommended to model in these units because they are hard to find, and when you do find one, you don't, you certainly don't want to break it because you're not finding another one. So, I've seen people mod Game Boy Lights. I wouldn't suggest you do it though because you're not really gaining anything. It's the same hardware. So, you, you're best just to buy a pocket and mod that and keep the Game Boy Light, like, clean it out and stuff and just put it on the shelf or something. Yeah, keep it as is. See, in the past me said the same thing. Okay, so now let's get to the Game Boy Color. Let's see. So released worldwide in 1998. So it's the first Nintendo hand handheld capable of displaying color graphics. More powerful than the original game, but it's got pre more powerful CPU and stuff like that. Same button layout. It also has an IR receiver that does the same thing as the link cable. But it only works with certain Game Boy Color games, however. But from but from what I understand, the IR port is basically useless because if you like get a hair in front of it, like the connection gets lost, so it's really no point. So it's backwards compatible with all Game Boy games. It has only exclusive library of Game Boy Color games. So let's talk about okay. So Game Boy lighting mods. You have the front light, so which is illuminating screen from the front, backlight. Similar to DMG in practice, it's similar to DMG, but it's different than how you do it for the DMG. So front light. Instead of lighting the screen from behind in front, it's placed on top of the original Game Boy Color screen. There's a reason why the Game Boy Color can be backlit the traditional way, but I won't get into here and I don't really remember why. <laughs> so instead we install a front light. So there's two ways to install it. You can just prop the front light panel over the screen, solder it to the bore and then be done. And the second way is to glue the front light to the Game Boy Color LCD using a special glue called Loca that makes the front look less washed out. It's kind of clear glue. Uh, th yeah, there's another YouTube video here, but I don't, I don't really think I should get into it. Another one. Okay, so I will say those when I did the front light though, like, it looks okay, I think. To me, I would equate it to a front lit Game Boy Advance SP. It does the, immediate, immediate, immediately it does look washed out. So let's go to the backlight overview. Okay, so originally Ben actually developed a way to use an aftermarket AGS-101 screen with a GBC. AGS-101 is the second model of Game Boy Advance SP, which has a true backlight LCD versus the AGS-001. See, I almost screwed up there, which is just a front lit screen. <laughs> but this is complicated. It, it uses its own custom ribbon cable to interface. However, there's problems with it, and I can tell you this because I actually did this mod. It's sitting in my drawer somewhere. Basically, it required extensive shell modification, and even when you did a shell modification, the, the, you couldn't actually close the Game Boy Color fully without gluing it together. And uh, the other problem was like uh, you you had to like yeah, so that's basically the big issue with it. You had to like also like cut half the power switch off. It's it's it was a big mess. So in recent times. He developed a new backlight screen for the Game Boy Color called the Freckle Shack, which required minimal shell modification. So basically, it's it, it, it the it's his own LCD. What well, you know, it's like a off-the-shelf LCD that has its own uh, processing 
interface board to interface with the Game Boy Color. Oh, sorry, yeah, so, uh, and it actually called you fully. So, you, there's other manufacturers that sell backlit LCD mods for the Game Boy Color. So, Funny Planes one, Mick Will, Midwest Embedded. So, oh yeah, so I forgot about this. So, basically, there's a new uh, freckle, shot, freckle shot called the Aeoli, which doesn't require any shell trimming at all. So, uh, as of recording this, um, you know, there's, I think they're still in stock as of recording this. But uh, yeah, so hopefully we'll find out more about that once people get 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 it and uh, play around with it. All right, so which backlight is friend f good for me? Okay, so the front light is inexpensive. So if you buy the front light and the loca, it costs you twenty four USD, and the loca is good for like a couple of installations. So you're going to need to buy that once. It's also already available. The back, the sorry, the downside is the images look washed out. It's difficult to install because when you glue it together, you get air bubbles, and if you're not careful, the air bubbles will be there. Plus, you also have to cure the glue in UV light, so you either have to have direct sunlight, which I did. So you need to wait for a really sunny day, or if you have a UV lamp. So it's not, you know, it, it, there's certain things you have to do to make it work well. Yeah. Okay. So I just kind of told you guys that. So. Alright, backlight. So, much better image quality, but it does require shell modification. Yeah. So, yeah, if you, if you don't feel comfortable modifying the shell, your, shell yourself, you can buy pre-modded shells, but they aren't original parts. And as we, y you'll, you'll learn this as you go along, that not all, like, aftermarket shells are, are, are the same quality. So, you know, your mileage will vary. Also, it's they range from fifty to sixty-five USD dollars, as so they're pretty expensive. Plus, all as always, the stock runs out easily. Another another con is that uh, uh, are they not like a hundred percent? At least not that I'm aware of hundred percent compatible with every single Game Boy Color or Game Boy game that out there. So you might see frame rate issues, graphical glitches, artifacts, sound issues, stuff like that. Yeah, and also uh, the the screens have uh, the resolutions are actually smaller than the original Game Boy Color. So what you can do is you can actually buy a custom uh, lens for it. <laughs> that uh, if you don't want to see the the out the the rim of the LCD. Oh yeah, also clones have popped up of these boards, so you'll have to do your research. Oh no, why is it not moving? Okay, few. Okay, so now let's get to the Game Boy Advance. Game Boy Advance released in 2001. It is Nintendo's third major handheld. It's uh, more powerful than Game Boy Color through, through a processor, added shoulder buttons, and a bigger resolution. So it's backwards compared with every single Game Boy game until that point. So we got three revisions. We've got two types of GBSPs in the Game Boy Micro. Still no backlight though. On the stock GBA, not you know, whatever. We'll get to that. So the GBA option, is the same idea. You got the front light, you got the back light. Okay, so the front light, basically the same as the GBC front light. So it carries the same issues that the Game Boy Color front light does. It will require some shell modifications, though. That's what I understood. I haven't tried it. Excuse me. So um, yeah, you you. So if you want to try it, you can experiment see how it looks. So it should be a back light mod. So you got two options. You can use aftermarket AGS-101 screen with a stock GBA, or you can use an outer replacement screen similar to the Game Boy Color. So the 101 mod is an aftermarket 101 screen, and it's possible to connect the GBA and use it. So GBAs have two types of ribbon connections, 32 and 42 pin. You have to find which GBA you have and buy the proper adapter for the aftermarket AGS-101 screen. There's this link here, but I don't really want to go through it because if you just do a quick Google search, you'll find it. You'll find like 20,000 links in like a million videos telling you how to find it. So I'm just going to continue. Some modification will be required though. Um, yeah. Okay, so similar to the DMG IPS, there's also a GBA IPS screen. So it's made by Funny Playing. Um, I'm not sure who else makes one at this point. I believe Benvin's working on one, but I can't really confirm that, so. So compared to the 101 mod, the screen is better. Yeah, it looks a lot better. Well, there's a video about it, but I'm sure you can look that up yourself, sorry. I just <laughs> Alright, so which option is right for me? So against the front line is least expensive, really available. 
Here's the Nintendo screen. Front light cons, difficult to install, washed out image. Here's one of Pro, proper backlight, real simple install, minimal shell modification. Aftermarket is really expensive. Originally, when I bought it for the, when I did the Game Boy Color, it was like 70 US or 72, and now it's at 84 USD. So, depending on where you live, that's going to be like plus the cost of shipping and stuff. And then you got to apply the. Apply the you gotta buy the proper ribbing adapter, which may or may not always be readily available, depending. So, and the IPS is better image quality, but once again, it's expensive at 54 and not very available. And you can you can also inc in in encounter graphical glitches, hiccups, those things like that. Clones, of course, and extensive shell modification, from what I understand. So, Game Boy Advance SP, but if you wonder what the SP stands for, I have no idea. <laughs> okay, so we, so we're in 2004, the first Game Boy Advance revision. So, actually, I should have said, yeah, okay. So, there's two, it's like a variation within a variation. Anyway, so there's two variants. The front light, AGS-001, and the back light, AGS-101. So, it was the first Nintendo handheld in almost a decade to include some sort of lighted screen. It is one that came out later and is and is more sought after. So like previous Game Boy Advances compared with all previous Game Boy games. So here's what I think you should do. Which this is what I will tell anybody who asks me about this topic. Um, so I will recommend you modify zero or one because the one ones already have a proper backlight. Only that if you mess up a, an AGS 101, you're, you're not going to get it back easy as they're pretty expensive. So all right, so only one. So you only have one backlight option since there's already a front light. For backlight, oh wait, I said one. Okay, <laughs> oops, misspoke. There are two options. So you can use an AGS 101 screen on AGS 001. Um, custom using the you can either use I think an original 101 screen or the aftermarket one, but obviously use the aftermarket one. Wait, is that what I said there? Oh no, sorry. The custom screen is what I meant to say is the like an IPS for a GBA. SP. Okay, so you can do a 101 screen with 001. It requires a modification. I think Benman came up with this. And I would point to the video, but it's 12 minutes long and, you know, there's a lot of stuff. So you best watch it yourself. <laughs> Alright, so the custom screen, the, this one uses also an IPS display. It will require a shell modification, though. So, 101 screen, use H101 screen so you can get someone similar to us, Natural AGS 101. Difficult to install aftermarket screen is best not really available. I believe you also need to buy an extra board and solder that too for it to work. So IPS is better, but once again it's expensive and not really available. And requires extensive shell modifications. Also the same graphical hiccups that you'll experience on the Game Boy Color. And Game Boy Advance. Regular. Oh man. <laughs> oh boy. Alright, so Game Boy Micro. So, this in 2005, the tiniest Game Boy yet. Proper backlit screen out of the gate. Unlike previous Game Boy models, the Game Boy Micro only plays Game Boy Advance games despite its name. Now, welcome to mods, they're, already, they're also sought after. There's, and there's already a proper backlit screen. So, let's get to the Nintendo DS. This in 2005, has two screens one resistive touchscreen and one regular, so it's not like a touchscreen on an iPad. Not strictly a Game Boy, but back compatible all Game Boy Advance games and only Game Boy Advance games. Only one mod available for this in terms of Game Boys is to remove the top screen, use the bottom screen as a regular Game Boy Advance. So it's dubbed the Game Boy Macro by aficionados. So big caveat with this, I wouldn't recommend you do this mod if the top screen is completely dead because no sense wasting a, a perfectly working Nintendo DS just to make a Game Boy Advance out of it. DS Lite, same thing with 2006, the first DS hardware revision, smaller version of the DS, and it's the final Nintendo handle to be compared with any games from the Game Boy Library, Game Boy Advance games in this case. Like the DS, you only know mods the Game Boy Macro, Macro sorry. so once again, only do it if the top screen is totally dead, beyond repair, you can salvage it, so you salvage the bottom. Okay, other Game Boy mods, sound fabrication, so boost the sound. So available for Unity, Pocket, GBC, GB, and I believe there's one for the GBSP. I'm not sure about the micro. So I have not found any community census, so you have to do your research. Overclocking and underclocking, way overclocking and underclock your Game Boy CPU. Known for the DMG and Pocket, though I'm sure it exists for Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance. 
and um, yeah, and this video out. So it's a way to extract the video from your Game Boy to an external display. So I will describe that now. Okay. The GBA Console Layer. Created by Wuzel64, the GBA Console Layer is a mod for original Game Boy Advance that allows the image and sound to be output on a modern HDTV or monitor. Comes with its own logic board and uses Super Nintendo controls as an input method. So you got two flavors. You got one that uses the original GBA to house the whole thing or a custom 3D printed enclosure to make it like its own miniature console. So it's not e the easiest monster to perform, and there's the link for it. I'll put it in the description if you want to check it out. Also, there's a lot of soldering involved, and they're also not really available. Okay, so apparently Will64 is also working on GB at ASP console layer, so I'll just see what that is. Alright, so this is a new one here. It's called the DMG console layer. It was created by UXC, Noble, and Postman. So it's a model that allows the DMG to be output, output VGA, video, and stereo audio to modern HDTV or monitor. It uses an Arduino interface with, with, the DM, with the controller using an NES controller. Relatively new to Marco, so I have to see how it fares. So there's, finally there's a way to salvage DMGs with broken screens. So if you break your screen, you can still use the motherboard part of it to connect to the using this DMG consoleizer. All right, DMG DS capture. This is created by Loopy. It's a mod that allows original DS and only original DS to output video to Windows PC using a USB interface. Unlike the GB and DMG console, the DMG the DS capture requires specialized software to interface with the capture board. Will also require shell modification. Oh well, you can also record GBA games this way. So my concerns: voltage regulators. You hear talk about people installing voltage regulators with their backlight mod. Unfortunately for this, once again, I can't seem to find a consensus among anybody. <laughs> so more research will be required. But the thing is, since we're adding stuff to the game, but we have to sort of stabilize the voltage to that to the. The original Game Boy specification because if it, if voltage spikes are never going to any electronics. So, yeah, decide one. Alright, shell modification. So, basically, a big concern for me, I mean, in particular, because you know, I, I don't think I'd be very good at it, and uh, so that's why I try to stay far away from them, you know. Um, so, it can be hard to do, especially if you don't have the best tools or if you don't know what tools to use because, you know, you, there's so many variables. So this could deter you from doing mods at all. But luckily for us, um, online retailers like Retro Modding and Hanna Legend sell pre-modded Game Boy shells at extra cost. Dallin says you won't be able to use your original cell and the original shell, and aftermarket ones have varying quality. I've not yet found a store that will modify an original Game Boy shell. So if that changes in the future, maybe it will. I don't know. All right, soldering. So. Some of the backup mods don't require any soldering at all. However, other mods like the sound, certain backlights, overclock, and front light, and the volt regulators will require soldering for them to function. So this can be a, de a, a deterrent. Is that what? Yeah, de for you, especially if you never soldered before. So rest assured, if you don't know how to solder, there are many resources available, and it's relatively inexpensive to start. Well, from my experience, anyway. Space. So DMG is the only Game Boy that has a lot of room to work on in terms of wiring and stuff like that. So all future Game Boys continue to get smaller and smaller, making some mods difficult to do space-wise. So experimentation and research and asking questions if you so desire on the Game Boy communities will help you determine how you can place your mods. Alright, so let's talk about selling mod Game Boys. So you you'll come across various people selling mod game boys across various platforms. So eBay, Facebook, I guess Craigslist or Kijiji or stuff like that. So you may have it's possible to do this to yourself. Well, there's you can, but there's a caveat. And the caveat <coughs> The caveat is that you want the mod to last last as long you want the mod to last as long as possible, right? So you need to take extra precautions. So but that's a video for another day. So how about buying how about buying a modded Game Boy? So when you buy a modded Game Boy, you will have to take also precautions as a buyer so you don't get well, I guess ripped off, scammed, whatever. So uh, Voltar, let's paraphrase Voltar, a uh, pretty popular modder. It uh caused mostly caused a modification to scene. So I watched some of his videos. Well, actually most of his videos, and he'll always tell you to um Ask the seller for pictures of their mod work and for their experience. So basically, if you find a mod Game Boy on eBay or something, and you, and you want to know if you want to buy it, because remember they're not cheap. I I see them sell for 150 bucks. We was charged as much as 200. Well, US, 
mostly U.S., but some Canadian, depending. Um, um, so yeah, so I asked him for the asked him for pictures of how it looked, the console looks like inside, because it may look good from the outside, but as we know, don't judge a book by its cover. Yeah, <laughs> that applies here. And for the modding experience, if they want to, uh, you know, if they if they're not well, you know, if if they want to make the sale, they'll <laughs> show you that stuff. Believe me. Yeah. Okay. So once again, topic for another video. So finally, we come to the conclusion section. So what is the conclusion section? There's no perfect solution for backline or frontline or any other mod for that matter. There's not no catch-all solution. Rather, you'll have to make concessions when choosing the proper mod for your specific needs. With all the work that people have done on game mode modding, the future looks pretty b bright for this subset of uh, video game console modification. Like, t yeah. And that's about it. So thank you for watching. I will put the links to all the stuff in the description. And hopefully you enjoyed my long ramble about Game Boy Mod. And I'm hoping this has helped you when choosing your old mods too in the future. So as always, take care. Thanks and bye-bye.